Hi, my name is Sabrina Trobach and I'm with Trobach Holistic Counseling. I'm going to be working with the City of Fort St. John to present some information around mental health during this situation that we are all in with COVID-19. What I'm going to talk a bit about today is around relationships. These relationships can be romantic relationships as well as relationships with you and your children, your children's relationships, relationships with friendships. I want to make it general so hopefully you can apply this information in any of those areas. Unfortunately, before COVID-19, there already was a fair amount of unhealthy relationships where these can range from very abusive, really unhealthy relationships to relationships where there's just a bit of a disconnect and the relationship is kind of strained. COVID-19 is making these relationships seem even more tense, more frustrating, more overwhelming. We're finding even with couples who have strong, healthy relationships, COVID-19 is also adding stress to those relationships. One of the main reasons this is happening is because it's taking away some of our major coping strategies. So coping strategies are anything that we do that help us get through the day. We can have healthy coping strategies like going for a walk, reading a book, doing some journaling, and we can have unhealthy coping strategies like drugs, alcohol, uh, anger. There can be a variety of different coping strategies. With everything that's going on with COVID-19, one of the really significant coping strategies that are being impacted in that are having an impact on relationships is around our ability to take breaks. Generally, we get up in the morning, have breakfast, go to work, go to school, come back at the end of the day. We're not able to do this. So we had these natural kind of breaks where we were able to take breaks from other people in our family um, throughout the day on a fairly regular and consistent basis. Now with COVID-19, where we're all kind of working from home, this isn't really able to happen. So we're with these people 24 seven, so we're not able to take these breaks. This lack of being able to take a break from people is gonna cause a lot of stress and anxiety for a lot of people. So it is important to take time, to take a bit of a break, go and do something on your own. Maybe that's going for a walk, maybe that's going to your room and reading a book, maybe that's telling your family to go for a walk and you spend time in your home by yourself. It doesn't matter what it is, but it is important to take a break. The other thing that's happening is we're losing other coping strategies like being busy, uh, taking, uh, going out with friends and family, getting out of the house, working in our regular work environment. All these coping strategies that have been taken away for us, from us create a significant amount of stress. So it's important that we're looking at what are some coping strategies we can use to help us manage things. Taking breaks, creating a routine, having a bit of a schedule, those can all be very helpful in creating more healthy coping strategies. Another piece of information that's important I think that we need to think about is having realistic expectations. It's important as we're working with our families that we're now with 24 seven, that our expectations should be based on past behavior. What that means is, if I've seen the behavior happening in the past consistently, it's okay for me to expect it. But if I haven't seen it happening consistently, having an expectation that it's going to happen is likely just gonna create frustration and anger for myself. So we need to have realistic expectations, expectations that are based on past behavior. So for example, if my son never makes his bed, but I want him to make my, his bed, for me to have the expectation that he's going to make his bed is unrealistic. Because even though I want it, it's never happened. There's no history of it happening consistently over a period of time. So I am going to get angry and frustrated, not because my child didn't make his bed, but because I have unrealistic expectations. I'm expecting something of him that he's never really done. That doesn't mean I don't set goals and work towards helping him make his bed and I teach him how to make his bed and I remind him every day, every day, every day and over a period of time he starts to make his bed. Once he's making his bed consistently then I can change my expectations and have an expectation that he makes his bed because he's been doing consistently for a significant period of time. So we need to have realistic expectations. If your partner, if your child isn't helping out, doesn't put dishes away or whatever it may be, have realistic expectations. Stop expecting them to do something that they haven't really done before. Because if they haven't done it before, stop expecting them to have it. 
you need to work on helping them so that they are consistently bringing their dishes and putting them in the dishwasher or whatever it may be. Once it's happening consistently, then you can have those realistic expectations. But if they haven't been doing it in the past and you're expecting it, the only thing you're going to do is create an incredible amount of frustration for you, which is then going to cause tension in your relationship with your child or your partner, whoever it is you're having the expectations on. The other thing that I think is also really important during this time is to really think about responsibility. We often talk about responsibility and really want responsibility, but it's also important to look at what it looks like when we're avoiding responsibility. So for a lot of people, when they're not taking responsibility, it looks like blame, justify, excusing their behavior, avoiding, denying, distracting. If you see someone doing these things, or if you are doing those things yourself, you are avoiding responsibility. So if I deny something, I'm avoiding responsibility. If I blame someone else, it's not really about the other person. The only person I can control is me. I'm avoiding responsibility. We need to look at those behaviors and figure out what's going on. If I take responsibility by saying, yes, I did that, but you should have, I'm now justifying or excusing my behavior by adding something else onto it. We need to work on just taking responsibility and ownership for our own behavior and not blaming, excusing, avoiding, denying. So if you are doing this, you're avoiding responsibility. If your partner or someone else is doing this, they're also avoiding responsibility. The more we work on that and take more ownership and responsibility, the less tension we're going to have in the relationship. Is If each person is looking at what I can do differently and how I can take responsibility for the relationship, the relationship is going to get a lot healthier. That's all I have for today. If anyone has any questions from what I've talked about today, please comment and I'll respond next week. And also if you have any suggestions for topics that you'd like me to discuss next week or in the next few weeks, please feel free to share those as well. Until I see you next week, take care, stay safe, Fort St. John.